welcome to the Lit Chicks Podcast. We are Mary Ellen Humphrey, Hello. Shannon Reber, and I am Susan Landrigan. We're coming to you today from the Innovation Studio at Lakeshore Center for the Arts in Westfield, New York. And today we are going to talk about, let's see, distractions. <laughs> distractions. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. That's a big topic. I got a ton of distractions. <laughs> We got distracted thinking about distractions. Well, I did. Yes. I did. Yeah, I, did. I got my mind went off somewhere else. <laughs> uh, I have actually found that the biggest distraction in my life is me. You are absolutely right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when it comes right down to it, that is the distraction. No matter what problem. it is externally, yep. it's how you're internalizing the cat on your computer. You're allowing <laughs> it, right? You're answering the phone. You're deciding to have. Uh, laundry done, you're trying, whatever it is that you're <laughs> letting distract you. You're mine, doing it. mine is usually a, a different book idea. I'm, I sit ah. down to write, and then my brain goes, "Whoop! No, we need to, we need to work on this story." And yeah, so <laughs> start a new one. Yes, exactly, exactly. This is why I have so many titles. Is because I started so many new ones when I was in in the middle of a project. You know, sometimes I think because I've got three or four, you know, things going, and I think, "Oh, that's good." I go, and then I get nothing done on any of them. <laughs> It's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. But in my defense, I have had, I think, a, a legitimate distraction. Okay. As opposed to a not legitimate distraction. Oh, okay. And that is I had to get some projects done at my house. Those, okay. now, those are pretty distracting, Honestly, yes. I could have lived with it the way it was, but my brain wouldn't stop thinking about it. So oh, I finished that. Okay. And, and here's what I do. I tell myself, okay, Mary Ellen, stop feeling guilty that you're not writing mm -hmm. and finish this project and then go back to it. And then mm -hmm. go back, exactly. Except there's another problem. I gotta work in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a new project that pops up. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of distractions do you get? My distraction is mostly my husband, <laughs> when he <The> is <laughs> home and he's not working on a project, he's trying to tell me jokes. Oh, look I what mean... I heard today, or listen to what I heard today. And it's like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> I'll get back to work now. But yeah, I figured it's easier for me to work when he is away or is, or if he is working on another. Project. <laughs> that is a very good idea, yeah. yes. Well, you you have the, the positives that go with that. I, I don't have any of that. I don't have the positives of a nice person <laughs> to talk <laughs> it over with. But I also don't have the distraction. So I consider myself... Except the cats. I, well, you yes, but I, I look... No offense to anybody, but I look at that as a positive <laughs> perspective for me. Because um, I, I can't... If somebody makes comments that that undermine my writing. Like, it, it could be a simple thing. Somebody could say, oh, I just didn't like that story. I like your other stories, Muriel, but that one I didn't like. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much my brain will focus on that one negative oh, comment. Yeah, and yeah, all I the see other that. positives I, I forget, and yep. I, I begin to zero in on, oh gosh, I'm really not a good writer. What am I thinking? Oh, I can't bother anyone else with my stuff. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> I don't happens. think you're bothering anyone yeah, by I know. your writing. Yeah, my, my they don't, they don't have to read it. Yeah. Right. They're not required to read it. If they yeah. don't like it, they can just move on. So I had a, a, a class one time that uh, this very nice lady came up to me, and she had been working for years trying to write a story. And she said, I just, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. I just can't write the story. And I asked her, I said, what are you afraid of? Because sometimes that's why we procrastinate. That's sometimes why we let that's ourselves be distracted. Good point. That's mm -hmm. a very good and point. And she thought about it. And she said, which was very true, I think, for a lot of us, she said, I'm afraid of what people will think. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid yep. that what I say might offend some people because she was writing a true story. Okay. I'm afraid of offending people, and I'm afraid of what I'm going to get. So I said to her, stop thinking about that. That's in the future. And just write what you want to write right. without showing it to anybody. Just give yourself that permission. I'm going to mm -hmm. write whatever it is, exactly. and then when I'm done, I can make that decision on whether or not to include the part that might offend somebody. Ah, and I'll, and you I can always remove a, it later. Yeah, right, and exactly. I said to her, you might be surprised how your perspective changes. Because That's you true. can write something, you can say, boy, that was a really terrible person. Or you can write something and you can say, this is how this person's 
behavior impacted me, right? It, you're not judging that person, but you're you're revising it after you're right. done and you've written down the event. You can revise that so it's not offensive, right? And it's more on you than on the other person. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, she Susan, finished her Susan book. Susan and I are both Good. doing that. Yeah. She well, I mean, I I did it a long time ago, but you're you're turning something from your past into fiction, mm -hmm. and I did the same thing. I turned mine into a fantasy story. And it is amazing how the, the distraction of the past actually uh, eases out when you're writing the story and you, you stop looking at yourself as the villain and you see how uh, this, this person was, was responsible for what they did and you weren't, you weren't uh, the villain you thought you were. Oh, granted, that's not not for your story, but yeah, yeah not for mine. But yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think most of us are, yeah. are kind people. I, mm -hmm. I may be delusional, but I think most of us are kind. <laughs> Sometimes, and, you know, I took a long, long time to write the really the first significant book I wrote, which was Faith. Right. And it's about it's based everything in the book is true, and it's based on actual experiences in a, a religious cult yeah. back in the '60s. And I struggled for years and years how to write this book. Was it a memoir? Was it an expose? What, and I ended up deciding to make it a fictional book, right. a novel style right. writing, because I did not want to offend mm -hmm. the people who were trapped in it still right. or exactly. who had escaped from it. It's not my job to tell their story. And so that was a solution for me that enabled me, and it took almost 30 years to get there, Yeah, to be able to write the book that I really felt so compelled to write that I went back to college and got a master's degree in writing. <laughs> Which made no difference in my writing, by the right. way. It just made me feel like, maybe if I have that, I'll feel adequate to write this book. Ah. <laughs> so, did it help? It, I don't know, I have a degree on my wall. But you know, it, it really, I didn't need it to do the book, but I right. needed right. it for my psyche to say I could mm -hmm. do the book. Okay. I'm good enough to... Yeah, and I don't yeah. want to say to anybody, go get a degree so you can write your book, because I didn't need it to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt... It just made you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I, I felt like I wasn't qualified. Mm -hmm. See, I, yeah. I, uh, I took some online classes, uh, some writing classes, because I thought, you know, it would help me uh, polish what I was doing. But it turned out that actually hurt me. Really? Uh, it, it, was, it was not helpful for me at all, because structuring what I do turns it into work. And then it's no longer the the fun distraction distraction yeah. uh, from <laughs> from my own mind, which is the reason that I write. I write to get away from what's going on around me and uh, in my head. So, so writing is a distraction, and distractions distract us. Distract from me the from the distraction. <laughs> oh, say distraction. that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I can say it one full time. I think we have an epiphany here. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's an odd epiphany, but I mean, oh, it makes sense in some way. I yeah, can, I yeah, to get it exactly. Yeah, as soon as as soon as I started taking those classes, I I hated writing. Oh, I hated it, dear. and so like when I stopped doing that, basically the uh, the editing tools and the beta readers that I use now, those are. Uh, I've done better with those than I ever did with any class that I ever took. You know, Shannon, I think in a, a future show we should talk about <laughs> strategies for improving our writing that mm -hmm. are working mm -hmm. and don't require a college degree. That or, don't require a college degree. <laughs> or hire yes. an expensive uh, editor <laughs> yeah. or whatever. That would be I like that. Wonderful. For another day. Uh, for another, another day. day, yes. yes. Oh, wait, that later. was a distraction. <laughs> We're distracting ourselves from our topic of distractions. Distraction. Come yeah. on. Well, I think <laughs> when you say distractions, we normally think of, you know, the typical the cat's walking on my computer, <laughs> or the phone's ringing, or, uh, or husband's asking done. us a joke, yeah. or uh, yeah, yeah, or whatever it is, husbands stinking do. husbands, <laughs> <laughs> good husbands. <laughs> I have to say though, he was gone for a week, and I thought, oh, I'm going to get all kinds of writing done, <laughs> and I did get some done, but I needed a distraction from my writing. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people who will tell you, I'm going to write a book when I retire. And I can't tell you how I, I was writing all these years, right? And I thought, when I retire, I'm really going to be productive. I did more when I was working. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people yeah. say that. Yeah. I, I see these stories about writers who, you know, they have full-time jobs, they have families, and, you know, they will get up at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. so that yeah. they can write before work. And 
I find that very impressive, very impressive. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I, impressive. I don't think I could do it. I would be so tired. <laughs> yes, I yes, mean, exactly. I can get up at six, but four, I don't know. Four is pretty early. And yes. my house is pretty quiet. I mean, aside from the cat, she's, she's bossy. But <laughs> she's very bossy, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have no excuse except that I distract myself. Yes, precisely. And that I, I, that is the thing. Yeah. You become your worst distraction. Yeah, yeah I am. Yeah, I, I admit it. And <laughs> I, I want to work on my story, but then all of a sudden there's this this gnawing uh, question, like you know, <laughs> did I pay this bill? Did I do that? Did I, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then I start rummaging somewhere and sorting out the drawer. And, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I find if I have something big like going on, like an upcoming trip or a party that I'm planning, then. I have to focus on that. I yeah. can't focus on writing. But um, well, I I have noticed, you know, when you're a young woman like you, Shannon, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can multitask, <laughs> and I did multitask. Oh yeah, I and that is actually a skill women have. Mm -hmm. But I've also noticed, after a certain age, I won't say which age, but after a certain age, <laughs> you're really now back to this one track mind thing. At okay. least I am. Okay. So yeah. I can do well if I concentrate on one thing. But if I start thinking about something else, it doesn't matter what I'm working on. It, it, it <laughs> takes a hit. So mm -hmm. I, I, okay. I, I know that. So I have to finish, you know, painting the cabinets or planting <laughs> the garden or whatever it is. And then I know I'll get back to the one track thing, which is the book. Oh, yes. But you yes, know what's yes. happening while I'm doing all that stuff is it's turning up here. Oh. Mm -hmm. I've got well, all these the things garden. that are working yeah. in my brain, and I'm thinking about how am I going to organize it? How do I <laughs> want it to open? Who's going to be the heroine? Because it has to be a woman, and I know oh. who it is. <laughs> and what's her name going to be? And I've decided oh. she's going to be Rita. I think I said that before. <laughs> and so here's all this going on, but I'm also washing dishes, washing laundry. <laughs> doing mindless yeah. See, that is not the yeah. way it works in my world. I, if if I'm not looking at the book, I'm not thinking about it, and I it just it doesn't even come into my head unless I am directly thinking about it and directly trying to work on it. So you don't think it's in your subconscious? What it might know? be, but it's not something that I'm conscious of. Ow. Not some. <laughs> yeah. It so, hurt you there. <laughs> yes, yes, it really does. <laughs> something I was telling you. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Well, I, I wasn't aware of it. This is a little strange, but when I was hiking the mountain, right, and, and I was feeling my brain expanding because th this is kind of building those new neurons and, and whatever, and uh, I likened it to like sort of a vision quest experience. Oh. But I became aware, if, if you've probably heard that if you have a left and your right side of your brain, you can yes. almost feel which side is working. I don't know which is which. One is math and one is language or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I feel that way. I feel like now I'm aware that my brain's working. When I wasn't before, it's not like it's not like you feel it physically, but you're just aware of it. Okay. Okay, now that's probably spooking you out, but it, it's going to come back to you. You're going to say, oh, Mary Ellen's on to oh. something, right? <laughs> well, I know when I get out to walk, sometimes if I'm going on a nice long walk and my mind gets, I get into a... Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working out all my problems oh, as I'm walking. Yes, okay. yes. And it, I, I think yeah. of it as walking meditation. Yeah, it really is, and, and it's it, it is expanding your brain, your your mind. The mm -hmm. neurons are really growing new paths, and you're becoming more aware, mm -hmm. more uh, awake. Maybe is the word uh, enlightened, <laughs> whatever the word is that we hopefully you know. What level of consciousness can we reach? You know, it's really ah. interesting. It's another fascinating subject that I can easily distract <laughs> myself with. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> From what I should be doing. <laughs> well, maybe we should um, go to our word for the day. I think that's a great idea. Our word for today is spelt. Ooh! How can you how can you spell can you spell that for us, please? S V E L T E. <laughs> Svelte. 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 What and is someone described as svelte is considered slender or thin in an attractive or graceful way. Ooh. Svelte can also be used to describe something sleek, such as a vehicle or an article of clothing. Ooh. Well, I wonder if, if older ladies can be svelte. I'd like to be svelte. <laughs> At least for a day. <laughs> I don't see why not. I don't it's see why not. It's yeah. being graceful as well as being thin and... Sleep. Well, the thin part is kind of hard, but yeah. maybe the graceful part, I don't know. <laughs> well, I have been thin in my life in the past, mm -hmm. and 
But I was never spelt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've never I'm been too, spelt in my entire life. Yeah. Too short. <laughs> too oh, short too to short. be... Short. <laughs> well, I don't think short should be a criteria for speltness. I think it should be, I don't know, an R about a person? Yes, yes, indeed. Maybe the graceful. <laughs> thin and graceful. I think of it like a cat is being spelt. Swel mm -hmm. How, I can't even say it. Spelt. Though. <laughs> spelt. Yeah, my brain didn't expand that much. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for spending time with us today. It was lovely. And we value your feedback, and we'll see you next week. And have a great week writing. <laughs>